Good morning, YouTube. I am Bearded Inc. And today we're going to show you how to properly install plugins in your version of OBS. Now, there are two primary methods there's an automatic installer version if you're on Windows, or the manual version. Uh, there are also uh, different versions if you're on Linux, which we will not cover in this tutorial. But if you want a specific Linux tutorial for that, just let me know in the comments below and we'll get that put out for you. Um, but we are going to cover mainly Windows here because that is the primary use uh, operating system on OBS right now. Um, but uh, for everybody else, if you're on a Mac or on a Linux, of course, you can follow along. The steps are going to be very similar. It's just some of the locations and the, the files and names are going to be a little bit different. But if you're on those systems, then you know what to look for in those replacement areas. So what do you say we just get right over into it? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the plugin website. I will leave a link down to the actual uh, plugin site here at obsproject.com uh, where you can scroll through and look. Um, but what we're going to focus on is uh, showing you how to install this plugin, which is called Muted Notification. Uh, basically, this plugin adds a uh, source filter to your audio components that allows you to link a wave file uh, so that if they receive input while they are muted it will play a sound in your headset or your speakers this is really good uh, for streamers who may mute their microphone when they go like on a brb scene uh, and then maybe sometimes forget to unmute when they come back to the game and then your chat's like we can't hear you the once you start talking into your microphone if it is muted this plugin will play a sound uh, to let you know that it's doing that uh, but what we want to focus on here is uh, how to download the plugins. Now, I'm going to focus on the two primary methods uh, for Windows, which will be the uh, installer or EXE installer version, uh, as well as a manual version. Now, what we want to focus on when we get to the plugin page is first off, you need to know where you are. Now, every plugin for OBS has to go through testing uh, with the o OBS system. Uh, and they can be found at the OBS Projects website in their uh, plugin and resources uh, sections. Uh, and each one of them will either be downloaded directly from the OBS uh, website, or it will link to the GitHub of the developer. Now, 99% uh, of these are going to be completely safe. There's no malicious intent by anybody. Obviously, these people want good ratings and to be noticed and to have their things downloaded and talked about, but it is always up to you to double check. So if you're not downloading uh, directly through either the OBS Projects website or links that came from the OBS Project website uh, to a GitHub, then you know you may want to do your, your checksums and all that to make sure that your hashes are correct. But what we are looking for are these little white buttons up here. So you'll see on this one that we're gonna use is the go to download. So this is going to link to a GitHub page. Now, if we were to go to like say one of Exeldro's like the move plugin that we covered before, you'll see that it is just a download button. And when you click on it, you'll get this that will tell you you can download the Windows installer, the zip file, the Linux or the Mac OS. And then there is a download button for those. And this comes directly from the OBS project website okay but what we are looking for here uh is the go to download because that's the plugin that we're going to do today so this should take us to a github web page and here we are uh, and you can double check that it is from the same user uh universal is the one that makes this so we are on the right one uh and then he has his checksums here if you want to make sure that you are getting the correct version so what we want to do is we want to scroll down and some of these will be longer, by the way. Some of these areas here, they will have like their whole installer. They may have videos. They may have version differences and things like that. So you want to scroll down until you see assets. And then this is going to give you the same links that uh, that pop up uh, previously that we saw did. So we're going to look for the Windows installer right here. And I'm going to go ahead and click that to download. These are direct download links. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And then once it is downloaded, you will see that we have it here ready to go. Now, if you use the 
EXE installer that we're about to, you have to make sure of two things. One, that you have OBS installed, obviously, and uh, here is the version of OBS that we're going to be using. Uh, this is my primary OBS version, the one I use to stream on Twitch and everything. Um, but the OBS cannot be open. You must close OBS. So we're going to close OBS and let it all shut down and everything correctly. And this way, none of the files that are needed for these are being written to. Uh, if you have OBS open and you install a plugin, there is a small chance that it can corrupt a file, which will make OBS uh, broken, or it will just not install and it will give you a little pop-up warning saying, hey, you got to close your shit, okay? Um, but it's always best practice just to close OBS before you add anything to it. Now. Next thing we want to do is we want to double click on the EXE that we just got. You might get this little window. If so, uh, from Windows saying it's pertaining to your PC because it's running an EXE file, you're going to click on the run anyway button down here at the bottom, and then we will run through the installer. Some of you may have a UAC that comes up as well, especially if you are running your OBS in admin mode. So this will be just your license information stuff here. We're going to go ahead and click next on all that and get to the part where it asks us where we want to save. Now, for 99% of you, you're not going to touch this at all. Okay, It's going to default to the C program files OBS studio directory. And if you have installed OBS um, automatically through the OBS installer, this is where it installs for you. Now, there is a small percentage of you also that may have you uh, install OBS into the program files x86 directory, which is different than the program files. If you are unsure, then what you want to do is you want to open a file directory. And we're going to go to our C drive and we're going to look. Now there, as you can see here, we have the program files and the program files x86. And what you want to do is just go into one or the other and look for the OBS Studio directory. If you don't find it, go to the other one and look there. And if you find it there, then you know which file uh, it is in. Now, again, for most of you, it's going to default to the installation of OBS, so you won't have to touch anything here. And then we're just going to click Next. This will give it a name. This is uh, only useful really uh, to change this if it is something that is very, very generic, like plugin. Um, this name will show up on the uninstaller and things like that. So if you do happen to click to uninstall, you'll know exactly which one you are uninstalling. So we're going to click next, and then it'll just give you a uh, summary of everything that we've done. You can double check that everything is correct if you'd like to, and then we're going to click install. It takes literally seconds, and then we are done. So we can zoom back out now, and now we can reopen OBS and take full advantage of the plugin we just installed. So let's do that now. All right, so now that OBS has reopened, now we can come in here and check what that we have our plugin completely installed. So, so now we're just going to, let me, let me zoom in. We're just going to right click here. We're going to go to our filters because it does say it was going to apply an audio filter. We're going to click the plus sign. And there you see, we have muted notifications. So if I click on it, we can give it a name. And then there, of course, is all of these settings and setup for that plugin. Okay. Now, we have one more method to show you. Let me zoom out here while I close that version of OBS. Um, and that is, of course, the manual installation. So a manual installation will just give you the files and you are to manually put them in the correct folder. So this is going to come as a zip file. So instead of installer.exe, we're going to look for the zip file. Um, and then, of course, there is the universal package for uh, Mac systems and then the Deb package or the Debian package for Linux users. So we want to grab the zip file. Same thing. We're going to save it to our desktop. Uh, the only really extra step here is that we have to unzip. So we're just going to right click and extract all right here to our desktop. And then we have our folder. Now, when we open this folder, you're going to see that inside every time, or 
two, and then there are going to be a few instances where you have a third directory. And what we want is basically we want to take these and put them inside our OBS folder directory. So let me zoom out here. So again, in our case, it would be the C drive program files, OBS studio. Uh, and then you will see that inside the OBS studio directory directly are the data and OBS plugin folders. Okay. So that's exactly what we had in here. So I'm going to show you by using one of my um, other portable versions, right? So what I want to do then is I'm going to, let me zoom out. So I stop making you dizzy. I'm going to go to my, uh, directory here and we're going to go to program files. I'm going to go to my tutorial program, my tutorial OBS. Okay. So this is the directory that I want. So here you can see there's the data folder, the OBS plugin. So if you look at the folder that we unzipped, all we have to do is select them and then we can copy them or you can just drag and drop if you don't want to copy and bring them over and then it will overwrite what's already there but don't worry it's not deleting anything it's just adding the files that were in that data and obs plugins to the current directories that are here so now if i open up the tutorial obs version and we go to one of our audio sources we can zoom in again down here you can see if we do the plus there is the muted notification again installed manually okay uh but that's it that's all we got to do so let's go back uh so there you go quick little tutorial now you know how to properly install your plugins for obs now we do prefer the installer method if it is available now not every plugin will have the installer option for you and you will have to do the manual installation uh, as you can see though it takes just as much time a couple of seconds drag and drop a couple folders and you're done uh, but we do like the installer version because they do come with an uninstall option so you can just uninstall that particular folder using the uh, uninstaller exe for that plugin which is why the name is important of course now if you do have to uninstall so for example a a one that you manually installed um, if you have to uninstall a plugin that you manually installed you just have to go into the data and the obs plugin folders and look for the files with that name and delete them um, otherwise you can just leave it alone of course you'll have the plugin but if you don't ever use it you don't really have to uninstall it and unlike other versions of obs style software it's not going to pull resources if it's not actually in use. So it's just going to take up space on your hard drive, a couple of megabytes. Uh, so you can leave that if you decide to, uh, and you don't want to mess with manually deleting files. All right. Uh, but there you go. If you have any questions, any hangups, or if you get any uh, questions about the plugin install, just leave a comment down below. If you learned something today, go ahead and give me that little thumbs up. And if you found something you didn't like, go ahead and give me the thumbs down. All I ask is that if you do give this video a thumbs down, that you leave a comment below and tell me why you dislike the video. That way I can learn from my mistakes and moving forward, I can continue to make better tutorials for everybody moving forward. Uh, and then of course, if you do have questions that you need answered on anything streaming related, come stop by here on YouTube. Every Saturday we are live. Uh, answering your questions on air right then and there. Uh, but that's it. So until next time, everybody, thank you for being a part of the show. We'll see you next time. Love, peace, and chicken grease.